Hey, this is Sean Tice with Let's Talk About Fatherlessness. Excited to have our guest today, Dr. Al Stone. How you doing, Al? Brother Sean, great to see you again. It's been a while since we were together. It's so wonderful to have you on. Last time we were hanging out, we were at a missions conference in Tennessee together. Yeah, and we, yeah. we got, we got, we were able to buy suits, right? <laughs> we were. Church got a suit. So that, that was fun. We got to know each other a little bit there. And I learned about how you have a ministry um, in Canada. Will you tell us more about your ministry? Yeah, I sure will. Um, I pastored the Bible Baptist Church in St. Thomas, Ontario, which is right across the lake from Cleveland, Ohio, right across uh, Lake Erie. And uh, for 30 years, and in that pastorate, we started a ministry uh, we now call the Canadian Gospel Project. And we endeavored to put a John and Romans in every home in Canada. And by the grace of God, we have done 10 and a half million of the 14 and a half million homes in Canada. We have 4 million less to, left to do, and we'll have reached our nation with the gospel. And uh, it, it was a lofty goal by the grace of God and some help with some partners across Canada and the United States. Uh, we're going to finish probably in the next two years. We'll have reached our nation with the gospel. And then uh, I in preaching and challenging churches in the States, uh, preached at um, the, the First Baptist Church in Eaton, Ohio. And they caught hold of what we were trying to do and said, we want to reach America with the gospel. And so we are partnering with the American Gospel Project next and are going to try and reach America with the gospel as well. So that's what we're doing. That's so wonderful. And, and that, that right there is the beginning of the the help for fatherlessness. I mean, that's the number one thing right. that can fix it is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ to them finding God as their heavenly father. So I really appreciate uh, what you're doing with that. And so thankful for, for your ministry. Now you're in Canada right now, right? Yes, I am. I'm uh, in the throes of winter right now. As we speak, we have a pretty severe storm coming through. Uh, hopefully the hydro, the electricity will hold out for us. Um, they're calling for some heavy uh, freezing rain and winds and all kinds of stuff. So we've been pretty fortunate this year, uh, to be honest. We had one really bad storm so far this year, and we're almost through February. If we can get through February, we're doing pretty well. So, yeah. That's great. I grew up in Pennsylvania, so I, I love uh, the seasons. I love winter weather. And so when you say that, it makes me feel like, hey, I need to get into a warm house and be able to you know, just, just relax with a blanket or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> makes me feel or like I out. should be in. It makes me feel like I should be in Nevada. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Or, or go out and shovel snow. I used to make a lot of money as a teenager shoveling snow. So, well, big money. I that. got old. I got old and bought a snowblower. <laughs> That's, That's, great. That's great. Well, we're having yeah. you up today because I wanted to talk to you about fatherlessness as I was planning the show out. I I thought about right. you and I thought, man, he he's in Canada, and I wanted to see what what's going on in Canada with fatherlessness. Right. Can you share? Just right. go ahead and. Un unpack anything you want to talk about. I mean, let's just have a conversation about this. Well, well, I'll tell you that the Canada I'm living in now is not the Canada I grew up in at all. Wow. Uh, it has drastically changed because of a couple different things. Number one, we have coming into Canada uh, up until about 19, I'd say 90 into the 2000s, about 250,000 immigrants coming into the country a year from mostly European countries. Um, that begins to change in the 80s, 90s, and we start bringing in from other areas of the world, Africa, uh, the continent of Africa, um, the Middle East. And a, a large, large number of East Indian people coming into our country as well. Uh, I am about two hours from Toronto. And Toronto is 5 million people in the greater Toronto area. It's the fourth largest city in North America, the largest in Canada. And there is a corner of the city called Brampton. And we now call it Bramladesh because there are close to 1 million East Indians that live in that corner of Toronto. And now with the prime minister that we have now, Justin Trudeau, who is a staunch liberal, 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 he makes, he makes the Democratic Party in the United States look very conservative. And he's been in the news through the pandemic. He made some great blunders, I feel. Uh, I, I don't think he represents our country well, but our country's changed. He's bringing in 400,000 immigrants a year, up to 450,000. Uh, we just brought in a number of immigrants from the Ukraine. And we've always been a humanitarian country and tried to help that way. But we've brought in so many people that we have lost 
our identity as a nation. We don't know who we are anymore. The only good thing about bringing in some of those immigrants is a lot of them do hold to our Christian values, even though they're not Christians. Uh, the Muslim world holds to a sanctity of marriage, um, a strong home. And so that's been some help. But with that being said, our country has about 40% of our marriages now ending in divorce. We have uh, a fatherless situation that would rival that even of the United States. Um, drugs are out of control here like they are everywhere. Uh, alcohol has always been an issue in Canada. It's, it's been a rite of passage for many, many years. Uh, when you turn 16, you start drinking. So alcoholism is a problem oh. here. And as you know, if you look up any statistics of fatherlessness, um, those things go hand in hand with the cause of fatherlessness. And when a father is missing in the home, you have major problems. And just like in the United States, many crimes are committed by the fatherless. Um, many educational problems with the fatherless, it's here as well. One of the things that really set us back is our prime minister, Justin Trudeau, who called for, and I'll, I'll read you a, a little bit of an article that I found during the 2021 Canada election, prime minister, Justin Trudeau told the men of Canada, you need to be feminists. And Trudeau is self-proclaimed feminist and his government has framed a, a feminist foreign policy and it's called the Economic Wells in Canada's AC session. Uh, the emphasis on feminism is a reflection of Canada's legal framework in general society. Canada is one of the world's largest nanny states. The Canadian healthcare system is expected to cost $308 billion in 2021, which is $8,000 per person. So when you hear about our free healthcare, um, nothing's free, right? Um, so that, um, it goes on to say the federal government spent $74 billion on COVID pandemic relief with a new round of benefits, uh, benefits costing another $371 million. So our, our government wants our people to be more motherly and wants to emphasize that wants us to give more way, uh, for, any kind of feminist movement, any, any kind of feminist support. I'm all for supporting ladies. I'm all for supporting ladies that need help. But that push has really feminized a lot of men in Canada. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I don't think men are stepping up to the plate to be what they ought to be when it comes to marriage, when it comes to rearing children. And that's caused a huge problem in our society. Yeah. And, and I, now that you speak about that, I was on a flight, um, I guess probably over 10 years ago with some of this older couple that were coming down from Canada. They were, I was in, I was going to Florida and they were telling me about, they knew about our ministry. I told them about it. Mm -hmm. And they said, there's a huge problem with the single mom issue in Canada because of the wealth, is it the welfare system. Is that what you guys call it there? Where they're, yes. they give free, is it free housing they get, or does they get a well, stipend for yeah. housing? Yeah, uh, everything is covered. And, and really, this is something that I think most American folks don't know. Canada has been really labeled as a socialistic, almost communist government for years because of our social programs. But the problem is America has the exact same programs we do. We just embrace them where I think America says, no, no, we don't have that. That doesn't happen. It does happen. If somebody in America gets sick and goes to the hospital and they don't have health care, somebody's going to look after them. If a lady in the United States has children and no father present and no source of income, she's going to get social assistance to help her. We have the same things. We just embrace them. We, uh, you know, um, advertise them, all of those things. So yeah, if somebody in Canada needs assistance, they're going to get it. We have a huge homelessness problem in Canada, but nobody in Canada has to be homeless. Nobody. There's a place for everyone to go. And we in our city just, um, our city council just voted unanimously to build 40 tiny houses in our city for people that are homeless to be able to live in. They'll be funded by the government. They, yeah. they won't have to pay for those. And it's taking a heavy toll on our society, on our country. And I don't know where that's going to stop, but something's got to give soon. So, yeah, there are social programs for everybody and anybody that 
says they need help in this country. I remember that couple was telling me that that people weren't getting married because of the assistance that women that have right. their single moms. Is that something that you saw when you were pastoring and stuff yes. too? Yes. I had people that lived together and I'd say, you need to get married. And they said, well, we can't. And I'd say, well, why not? Well, we can't afford, we can't afford to. Because I'm getting social assistance and she's getting social social assistance. If we come together, then you know we lose that. But they so, just live yeah, together. I saw. But they're they allowed to just together. live together. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, what what did you see as a pastor with with the issue of fatherlessness with kids? Um, is oh, it very man. similar to the United States and the same type yes. of problem? Yes. The one thing that we have different, Sean, is um, we don't have some of the poverty that you have in the United States. We don't have some of the um, ghetto areas that you'd have in some of the bigger cities. We do have we do have some you know areas that are probably a little harder done by, but we don't have what you've got. Um, we don't have some of the same crime issues that you have. Uh, it's coming with drugs. They come uh, because of gun control in Canada. Uh, we see some less severity to crime because of that, but there's definitely there's definitely issue here. Um, the fatherlessness in our country is mostly because of drugs. Um, you know, the father and mother meet in that, that background and then he's gone. He takes off. There's a responsibility. I'm gone. I can't do that. And so we had a huge bus ministry in our church. It was a big part of our ministry. Uh, we, for years, like many churches brought in, you know, 50, 60 kids and we saw those numbers declining on Sunday, and the Lord just really gave me something. I was begging him, what are we going to do? We're going to lose the future of our church if we don't reach some children in our community. And so we started a Wednesday night bus ministry program. We called it We Went to Wednesdays. And we went from 50 kids the very first week we picked up kids on bus on Wednesday night. We had 175 kids show up. Wow. Wow. And we were picking up at one time around 225 kids on buses on Wednesday nights. They were home. They were at the same home every week. Uh, they were up. They were fed. The parents were ready to get rid, rid of them by midweek, you know, six o'clock Wednesday night. And we were bringing in a ton of kids, most of them from broken homes. Or there was a live-in daddy or a couple live-in daddies or whatever. So, yeah, we saw it, saw it huge. Uh, tried to minister to that as best we could. Um, we didn't have a program like yours in mind. I wish we had. I wish we'd had your program back then. That would have been a great help. Wow. So, so a lot of those kids that you had on that bus, were they, what's percentage? Just a ballpark. What do you think, Bob? What's, I mean, oh man, 50, 60 percent. Easy. Yeah. Maybe 70. Yeah. A lot. Now, you didn't, you didn't see the, um, you said you don't have a ghetto. You don't have those kinds of right. things there. Right. What are, what's the difference? I mean, what are the differences you see from the United States to Canada with oh. bodlessness? I mean, you said, you said yeah. drugs, but I mean, what are, what right. are the differences? How is it, how well, is it different up there? Um, well, I would say I, having worked in the States, I worked in a bus ministry in Cleveland, Ohio for a number of years, but that was 35 years ago. Um, I, I would say I don't think, and I could be wrong because I'm not living there. If I am, you feel free to correct me. But I, I think there would be a lot more violence against children in a fatherless situation in the States than there is in Canada. Um, there, There is abuse. I don't think to the same level as there would maybe be in the United States. Um, I, I think that most men here, even though they're not in the home, would still want to have some kind of interaction with the kids, not full time, you know, maybe other every other weekend, maybe for birthdays, something like that. They want to be there, but not in a heavy handed way. I think yeah. that would be a difference. Okay. That's interesting. And so it's, it, I mean, honestly, it's they're probably very similar than um, compared to the. Now, why do you think that? Why do you think the crime rate is lower? Why do you think there is not? In Canada, like, why do you think there's not? Because there is a lot of ghetto areas in the United States where they're just mm -hmm. rougher areas, rougher neighborhoods. Um, right. Why do? You, why is it like that in Canada? Why I didn't realize that there wasn't as much of that. Well, well, number one, handguns. We don't have handguns. Um, some criminals do. They're here but not to the same level that you'd have them in the United States. So that, that deters a lot. If, if someone's going to get hurt in Canada, they're probably going to get stabbed and to get stabbed, you have to know somebody or get close enough to somebody to do that. So that that's part of it. The mm -hmm. other thing is because of the social assistance here, 
there's not a real poverty. It, it's it, it, we're a wealthy. We're in the top nine wealthiest nations in the world. There's a lot of money here. And yeah. so that wealth does trickle down. So if I drove you to what I would call the, the ghetto area of St. Thomas or London, Ontario, you would laugh. I mean, large screen TVs. Um, I, there's one here in town. It's geared to income. There's a Hummer there. There's a guy driving a Hummer. That's low income housing. Hmm. And it's just, it's more affluent. And because of that, you know, there's more drugs but there seems to balance out with because where they're living, it doesn't seem to be the same kind of uh, cr- crime associated with it, to be yeah. honest. Did you guys do any any type of, with your big bus ministry, did you do any type of like mentoring, any like any yeah. broken off things? Did you do anything like that? Uh, we tried. Um, we didn't have great success with it, to be honest with you. If people are funny. We had a, we had a meal. Uh, we invited every single parent on our bus route to come for a meal. We put it on roast beef, mashed potatoes, gravy, everything. We said, come, we want to come. We planned on having about 60, at least mothers there. We had four people show up. Wow. Four. Because they don't need it. There's so much. They're so abundant. They, they, they have food. Um, they have community. And they they didn't show up. We were so disappointed. We thought, man, we could really make some inroads and help. And because of that social structure, they just felt like they didn't need to come. And I think an, another part of it was uh, they they didn't want to come to church with their kids. Church was a babysitter. Church was I can get my kids out of my home and I get some peace and quiet or, you know, baby daddy can come over or boyfriend can come over. And we had some guys. You know, same with the late, they bring ladies in or whatever, have their lady time. Um, that was, that was more what they were looking for. Okay. Huh. Do you think, do you think some of the moms were there? Because what we found is in our ministry is we, you know, you weren't, you weren't sure when we started the single mom ministry in Las Vegas, we weren't sure what kind of single moms we'd get. We didn't know if it'd be ones looking for assistance or what it might be. And the majority, I mean, Mostly all of them, the ones that were, that come to our group are the ones that are working a job. They're they're right. back in school. They're looking for community though to help them right. with the situation they're facing. Now, do you think something like that nowadays in Canada would be? Because that's what we do. We start single mom groups. Right. Do you think that's something right. that would work in your type of setting? Um, yeah, I I think so. I I think everybody's looking for some some type of community. And what we have found is those that you know the majority of single parents live in that that geared to income housing or low income housing that's their community they all associate with each other they they're all in the same boat and to come to church where there's families and it's mom and dad and here's the kids i i don't know if maybe that makes them feel bad or uh maybe they feel uncomfortable because they don't have that i think if we had a program like yours that went into those communities and worked within those communities. I think that'd be a great thing. I think that'd work well. That'd be I interesting. Like in well. the clubhouse, like having mm-hmm. like a single mom support group in a clubhouse or something like that. That's, right. Exactly. That's a good idea. Exactly. I mean, and that's the thing you know, you could do it that way um, mm-hmm. as well. That's really yeah. interesting. You'd say that. I make, make, sure. make the connection, then bring them to church. Yeah. That's yeah. good. That's good. Cause the thing is when we traveled and, and spoke and did, we were traveling all over the country, speaking in churches. One of the things is women would say, I don't feel connected to the church here. They're already going to the right. church, but they don't feel connected. They don't feel like anybody cares mm-hmm. about their kids. Right. And so the ones that are going, so giving them that community, I think would um, definitely you know help them with that situation. Yes, absolutely. And, and I think that's, I think that's a big part of it. Um, I, I think a lot of mothers who are, you know, single mothers, I think they feel a failure sometimes they're not um, they've been put in a very bad situation many times, not because of their own fault, but just guys are not what they should be. Men are not manly. And and the Bible talks about an effeminate day, you know, and, and there will be an effeminate uh, thing among men. And here we're seeing in my own government saying, yeah, we need to be, you know, more effeminate. We need to have more of that. And uh, th- it's, it's, it's troubling to me when I was a kid, you know, and this is only, I'm 50, I'll be 60 this year. So let's say 50 years ago, one generation. I mean, in my hometown, I, I didn't know three divorced people. I don't think 
In fact, I met my old school teacher a couple of years ago, and she told me, she said, I asked her, what's the difference in being a teacher today from back then? She said, when I went to school, she said, we had three kids that had a divorced home. She said, now I'm teaching kids that only have uh, three families where there's a mother and father. It, it's such a high rate of divorce and, you know, single parent or parents trying to parent, you know, from different locations. So that's that's a big difference in 50 years. One generation, the home has been completely demolished. And I, I just I can't believe it sometimes because it was so strong when I was a kid. It was such a such a great time. And in that 50 years, we've gone from having a conservative party and a liberal party to now having a somewhat conservative, probably fiscally conservative party to an extremely liberal party. And then add on top of that, we have the new Democratic Party, which is completely socialistic. And they right now are holding the liberal government to task because the liberal government doesn't have enough power within our system to pass any law. So they then have to get the NDP or the new Democratic Party to support them. And so they say, whatever you want, whatever you want to do. And they are all about social programs. In fact, they're pushing now for nationalized dental care so that everybody gets free dental care as well. Who's paying for that? Yeah, I am. Right. So that's that's another contributing factor. And, and so going back to so talking about your government, they they so the people that are relying on the assistance, they're loyal to the government. Then, right. Is that Absolutely. And the new immigrants that are coming in are told, if you don't vote for this party, then your family's not going to be able to come. So this liberal party, these are the people bringing in more people and they want to bring in your family, but they have to stay in power. So you have to vote for them. And I just talked to somebody recently that came in as an immigrant and they went to some classes to learn about, you know, the way Canada functions. And they, they told them that in those classes, you better be thankful for the liberal government. They brought you here. They'll bring your family here. So they, yeah. and they stay tied to that. Yeah. The United States is yes. following the same. The United States is in the same boat. I mean, we're bringing in all kinds of uh, immigrants and stuff like that. Same thing. And, and I'm sure that'll be, be taught to yeah. them as well. And so it's, it's amazing how that's, you know, changing our, um, our countries. So, yeah. you know, now anything else with the issue of fatherlessness uh, relating to your country, anything else that comes to your mind that you want to share? Yeah, or- yeah. I definitely see um, in the generations coming behind me, I see in young men, a lack of masculinity for sure. It, it takes a man to raise a boy, to be a man. A mother cannot do that as much as she loves him. She can train him to be a good boy, but she can't train him to be a man. There's, there's, that's a man's job. And so we have a generation or two now of young men that are growing up with a strong um, mother influence, sister influence, and they're not the masculine men that we're going to need in the days ahead, especially with conflict on the horizon. I mean, this thing in Ukraine, Russia, China, Taiwan, we're hearing of that all the time. There's there's some major things brewing. And if Canada was called into a war, number one, I don't know that we'd have that many young men enlist. They'd just be afraid. Um, and they, they've been taught that, you know, you don't punch, you don't hit, you don't fight, you know, you don't do that stuff. And we've become very passive. Canada has always been a peace loving nation, but when called to fight, our people have fought first, second world war. We we were in before the United States. Um, our people participated in the Korean war, Vietnam war from Canada. So we're a fighting nation. If you don't think so, go to a hockey game. You'll see, you know, yeah. um, if, if needs be, we'll do it, but we have definitely become more passive through the years. And I think that's because of a fatherless situation. Yeah. I mean, has it affected hockey at all? Are you guys lo- like lacking on trying to find tough guys? Um, that- <laughs> well, hockey's definitely changed. I mean, uh, yeah. Wayne Gretzky was a finesse player and Wayne Gretzky changed hockey here. Um, the days of the goons going out and just brawling, those days are gone. I mean, Back there's from- still some good, there's some, yeah, there's some still, there's still some good, you know, rough, tough action, but definitely not what it used to be. And, you know, kids, 
you know, so that kids don't get hurt. I don't want kids to get hurt for sure, but they put big stop signs on the back of their shirts so that if a kid's into the boards and you see the stop sign, then you can't hit them because you might hurt them. When I was a kid, it was a, it was a green light, man. (laughs) It was was, that kid's not looking, take him out. Uh, So I I want people to be safe, but it's definitely, it's definitely changed a little bit. I think. Yeah. The NFL is the same way in the United States. It's like, I still love it. I still love it, but there's so many roles. Yeah. It's like, come on, you know, this, that's yeah. what they're playing. That's why they're getting paid millions to be able to be hit. You know what I'm saying? I know. <laughs> I know. You know, I will say this, and I just saw this is interesting. You know, with uh, the young man that went down in Buffalo, had the heart uh, issue, died on the field. It was amazing to see how many people were kneeling on that field and praying. Yep. They needed God then, didn't they? Those tough men who have millions of dollars could not help him, you know, with their money, couldn't help him with their influence and power. So what do they do? They begin praying. And it's interesting to see that in our countries, when people are really in trouble, where do they go? They didn't call for the government to help. They call for God to help. And my hope is this, that with churches and programs like God is my dad, that there are people starting to realize we are in trouble. The, the whole um, homosexual agenda, the transgender agenda, oh my goodness, our prime minister won on a program here that does the whole, um, uh, what's that called? The, oh, I always forget the name, where guys dress up as girls, they've been reading Drag queens. Books. Drag queens, thank you. Yeah. Went on a drag queen program here and told Canada, we need more of this. We need more of this. We, we need to be more accepting of this. So that that whole thing has really messed up our young people as well. Yeah. And they, there was a school here in London last week. They had a homosexual appreciation day and 30 percent of the school did not show up that day. 30 wow. percent. So people are starting to realize and say, you know what? This thing's out of control. This yeah. thing's nuts. And we've got to get back. The pendulum's got to come back. And I think people are getting close to that. And I think a part of that is we've seen the detriment of not having strong homes with a mother and father in it. That's true. Now, you've already touched on a little bit. As we wrap up here in a few minutes, I want to, the last part, I want to ask you this. I, I've seen you have you even have a suit, Mr. Canada, right? Is that what you call it? Captain Canada. Captain, Captain Canada. Canada. Captain Canada. You, you got go. a Captain Canada suit. And, yep. um, you know, you're, you're all decked out. So you are Captain Canada. So. Picture this, the government comes yep. to you. They're desperate. Justin Trudeau is like, man, we, we've made a mess. You know, he, they come to you, the Captain Canada, and yep. just they're like, well, how do we fix it? How do we fix this issue of fatherlessness in our nation? Right. What would you say? What are your th- couple action points that you would tell them? Okay, number one, our prime minister said when he became prime minister, if you have any kind of religious affiliation, I don't want you in my government. If you believe in right to life, you will not be a cabinet minister in my government. This is the first time in the history of our country that we have not had some kind of religious um, identification within our government. We need to have a balance of religious input with our politics. I think that's important. Um, But more importantly, I think we need to get back into our school systems and start teaching boys and girls that this is a natural home, a mother, a father, children, that we need to, we need to obviously be winning people to Jesus Christ. That's first and foremost. I think, I think we understand that we need to get the gospel to people. We need to um, shore up our churches to make sure that we do have good programs within them to teach people how to have a good home, how to be a good dad, how to be a good mother, how to be good children. We need that strongly taught within our churches. We take that for granted. And a lot of people just don't know. And a lot of these kids that are growing up without a father, boys don't know how to be a father. They've never had that that example in their lives. We need to get that into uh, people's lives again. We need to um, bolster. We need to uplift. And we need to promote the family unit and the value of the family unit without question. That's good. That's good. And I, and I appreciate you saying all that. So definitely Jesus Christ, you know, telling them about Jesus, promoting masculinity. I mean, there's so many things to that where uh, they need to be understand what it is to be a man, how to be a, a, 
a, a man that, that loves God, how to be a man that has integrity and then how to be a husband, how to be a father. And so those are so important. And, mm-hmm. and if we're not teaching those things, I mean, that's, that's the society we're going to come up with. It's going to, it's going to fail. Right. You know, the, right. the structure is going to, going to crash eventually. And, and, and then, like you said, if war happens, they're not going to be able to fight. You know? right. And then, and the government's just struggling. It's going to struggle because of, of the, all the people relying on it and not working. And that and there's just so many things that come from this issue. And I appreciate yeah. you, on, you know, unpacking all of that. And is there anything else you want to share as we wrap up here? I would just say that, you know, sometimes as Christians, we forget that an unsaved world thinks like unsaved people. And our society is lost. And the Bible tells us, husbands, love your wives. Why does God have to tell us to love our wives? Isn't that a natural thing? No, it's not natural. It's not natural within me as a man. And it's definitely not natural within me as an unsaved man. And I think that we have lost that where, where, you know, my generation, I would say probably 60% of my friends went to Sunday school. The generation before me, I'd say probably 70 or 80% of those people went to church and we learned about the home. We learned about a father, a loving father, and we learned about, you know, husbands, love your wives and be the head of your home. And, and now today, what percentage of children in our countries are getting that training in a Sunday school setting. I had a teacher from my church that came into my classroom when I was a kid in my public school and taught an entire class period, Bible truths. That's no longer there. The Gideons used to put Bibles in the schools of Canada back in 19, I think it was 87. The school boards of Canada said, no more. We are not allowing them to bring those little new Testaments into the schools anymore. No influence there, not on television, not in the schools, not going to church. We have exactly what we produced. We have a nation that is godless. We sing God save the queen, God save, um, or, uh, God keep our land glorious and free in our national anthem, but we don't mean it as a nation. And we've got to get back to where we understand that God is God and that he has a plan. And that plan includes a man and a woman and children. That's where we got to get back to. Dr. Stone, I appreciate you being on, and, and it's so true. I've heard your national anthem, parts of it at least, and I, I hear it, and then I, th- I look at the news, and I see exactly what the leadership's doing in oh. Canada, and I think to myself, oh. that doesn't really match at all. But no. um, I, I appreciate you being on with us today. As we wrap up, would you just tell us how to connect with your ministry, sure. with you, where you're at? Absolutely. I would love that. And thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's great seeing you again. And uh, my son's just recently moved out to Nevada. He's in Pahrump. Of all places. Yeah. And then the other community next to it is pum 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 <laughs> So uh, we're hoping to get out there. And when we do, I will definitely look for you to see if we can find you. But uh, to connect, I would love people to look up Al Stone, A-L-S-T-O-N-E dot C-A for Canada, Al Stone dot C-A. Um, you'll hear about our Bearing Precious Seed ministry and the Canadian Gospel Project. Um, you'll be able to find out where I'm at and uh, what we're doing love for you to connect with that so alstone.ca does it all you can connect through there uh, email through there all of it is right there at that website well Al, it was great to talk to you stay warm up in canada and yeah looking forward to seeing you again sometime thanks john great thank you so much appreciate it say hi to your family for me would you will do thanks to learn more about how you can get involved in fatherless family ministry, visit lifefactors.org where you can find some free resources. You can find our books that we have. You can find some, even the program that we have to help you start a single mom ministry within your ministry or within your church. We can all work together to lead fatherless families to the Heavenly Father.